Hello viewers, welcome to Eric's workshop. Welcome back to the political discussion that we've started in series. Um, we're going to be deliberating on Constitution of Ghana today, 1992 Constitution of Ghana today. So without much ado, I will ask Mr. Charles some few questions so that we get on with it. But please don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like and put your comments in the comment section below. Uh, Mr. Charles, welcome to my program again. Thank um, you. Mr. Very Eric. well pleased to have you here. Thank you, sir. Um, I want you to ask you this question. What are the drawbacks of this 1992 Constitution of Ghana? What do you think is the fundamental issue of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana? Please, can you tell my viewers? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Eric Kukudonko, for having me. Um, I think, uh, following on from last time, we did mention that, um, you know, the very thing that our leaders come in with the good intentions yeah. to rule the nation and rule it well, something goes wrong along the way. And we think that these are structures and systems. And it turns out that the Constitution is one of the main, the 1992 Constitution is one of the main problems. Mm -hmm. It is one of the main obstacles that is actually stopping us or stopping the leaders from doing the work and doing it properly. Now, I say this uh, because what I do is that I go to the experts. Um, we have a professor, uh, Professor Ransford Jampo. Mm -hmm. uh, he gave a lecture about a year ago on constitution and constitutionalism. Mm -hmm. And so what comes out is that constitutionalism, the rules and regulations set within the, in a democratic system, mm -hmm. constitutionalism has with it checks and balances. Okay. So, so that is what really works. But in the case of Ghana, mm -hmm. we have a constitution, the 1992 constitution, mm -hmm. which is a constitution, but it lacks those checks, checks and balances. balances. So let's and that say, is what mm -hmm. causes that fundamental problem okay. for the leaders in doing their work and doing it properly. Properly, effectively. Yes. So let's say that Article 78, Clause 1 of the 1992 constitution states that it mandates the president to appoint majority of his ministers in parliament, which makes it a non-democratic, you know, country. Because if the president has the sole right of appointment, then it means that it's a dictatorship kind of, you know, process, isn't it? That's that that that's how that's how it is. So I think this is one of the major 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 issues you know fundamental issues, issues. of yes. the constitution yeah. yes and i think that is why nepotism is playing its role of course in the constitution of ghana or in the in the in the democracy of ghana or in the um dictatorship of ghana that's what i'm going to say yes. so you can continue yes. with your yes line of i can agree explanation. i can agree with you uh, uh mr eric uh, kukudongo for what you have said mm -hmm. that is the problem because the thing with the in a democratic system when you have constitutionalism you are going to have checks and balances mm -hmm. so i'm just going to quickly run through what the checks and balances are right so quickly in the checks and balances you need to have a rule of law the rule of law will state that nobody is above the law mm -hmm. the law is made by the legislature the legislature are the people that you the elect, makers. of yes. course, the people that you elect in your constituency to go into parliament uh, as your MPs. They, uh, they are charged with the power to make laws in the land. Yeah. The president will only rubber stamp when they've had their vote in parliament and they know, okay, we approve it. Mm -hmm. The president will rubber stamp it to give or it that it. Yeah. presidential mm -hmm. seal. But he doesn't have an influence mm -hmm. in the process that that law is being made. Okay. And nobody is above it. Mm -hmm. So in constitutionalism, you need to know, you need to have that. The next thing is to have a due process. Mm -hmm. The due process means that when there is an allegation mm -hmm. 
or an accusation or an, an investigation against anybody and it's it once again it's anybody it can be from the lowest person <coughs> to the president yeah. if uh, there is a, 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 an allegation or something made against a, a person yeah. they can trust in the system that they will have due process that means their case will be heard in the court mm -hmm. the, if the, a jury is required a jury will be put in place and they will be tried fairly but do you know that article 128 clause 1 states that the constitution gives no limits of justices that the president can appoint so it means that the president can appoint extra justices if there are extreme cases in the Supreme Court. Do you yes, know that? So it, it, it nullifies the democracy of Ghana. And that is something that we need to sort of revisit and amend it yes. accordingly. Correct. So if you have a and, process and you like know, this. You know that U.S. has got nine justices and that's it. Okay. They don't add or that's take right. or subtract. Yes. But in our case... It's quite different. The president can appoint extra in order to, you know, fulfill their own sort of, I, I can't say anything again. So, so in it. effect, this type of mm -hmm. uh, thing that Mr. Kukudonke has just said, it actually undermines the due process. That's it. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing is that you need to have an independent and, and, and I will say, and a responsible media. Mm -hmm. So we have a situation in Ghana when we say free press. Yes, as part of a democratic system, mm -hmm. you need to have a press that is independent. However, what I say is that, is that press a responsible press? Because if you want to be free, if you want to be independent, you have to have responsibility mm -hmm. in the work that you do as an independent press. So you don't want to, uh, you are press and sometimes, you know, lots of insults, lots of this. You know, you've got to be neutral as the press. You have to be neutral. And you have to give facts and it has to be delivered in a manner that is considered to be you know proper and serious you see so, so it means that do you want to say that some of the press are not free and fair in terms of partisans um, one one could say one could say because probably in the in in your ndc npp which are the main ruling parties in ghana there are media houses that will have you know affiliations okay. with these parties and this stops them from giving to the people a non-biased view and and do you think that that should be reflected in the constitution yes because in, uh, in, in constitution media. in constitutionalism mm -hmm. which is what the, the constitutionalism the is where we should be going okay that is where we should be going in order for us to mm -hmm. enter our next state of economic uh, development and prosperity of the nation mm -hmm. these structures these political structures and democratic structures mm -hmm. has to be in place mm -hmm. to support that growth because otherwise you, you you're going to you're not going to go far right uh, the next thing that i probably want to touch on will also be your independent judiciary mm -hmm. so the chief justice his appointment doesn't have to come from the president the chief justice is neutral. He needs to oversee. And just as you said, if a president can bring in an additional uh, two senior judges in the Supreme mm -hmm. Court mm -hmm. or in the highest court of the land mm -hmm. uh, for a decision to be made, yeah. then that actually diminishes the whole process of the independence of the judiciary. Of the, it undermines, it Correct. undermines the judiciary. Correct. You know. Then the last, the last, mm -hmm. maybe there are other factors, but one of the last most important uh, factors under constitutionalism, which I would like to mention, mm -hmm. is the separation of powers. Okay. So, in any democratic system, you have the executive. The executive is the body that will be ruling the country, i.e. the president and his, uh, and his cabinet, and his team. Yeah. So they is. will form the executive. Mm -hmm. Then the legislature are the people that you've appointed people that have been elected democratically yeah. from their constituency yeah. to come into the parliament yeah. these body the, the lawmakers mm -hmm. they also have to be independent so this is separation of powers they all need to be separated mm -hmm. and then you have the judiciary yeah. these are non-partisan senior uh, people that have acquired their position through maybe working as good lawyers and extending into being good barristers and mm -hmm. 
you know, serving for a very long time that they earned that respect yeah. to be there. And mm -hmm. that body, when it's set up, obviously the number has to be odd in order that you know, if a decision so needs they, to be So they see to the criminal justice system. They see to all yeah. anything, all, all matters, i.e., um, what do we call mm -hmm. a civil, civil or criminal or, or yeah. you know, political, mm -hmm. anything that is of a matter of law, okay. they oversee it. But they have to be a totally independent, independent. body. And so when you have these structures in place, mm -hmm. then you are ready. This is what we need. And this uh, system of constitutionalism mm -hmm. is something that the 1992 constitution is not. It's not because it hasn't got the checks and balances, no responsibilities, and no accountability right. when anything happens. It just excessive power, powers to the president. And the president has that, you know, um, higher influence over every process, isn't it? Correct. Which makes it very wrong. And it needs to be amended. Correct. But so, but do, do do you think do you think um, our presidents, the ex and the new ones, do you think in their right mind, in their right frame of mind, they are ready to make things work? They are ready to amend this um, constitution so that it becomes a very democratic constitution as we know all over the world, because this doesn't cut it in terms of democracy this is like a dictatorship because yes. if the president have the sole mandate the sole authority of appointing the majority of members cabinet the, the, cabinets, the, 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 the chief parliament, ministers, yeah, the electoral the ministers and uh, the justices and all that then yes. it means it the government of bank of Canada. it means i now understand why nepotism is playing a major role in our yeah. it is not written but then yes. it is done in our in our in our uh, politics in Ghana. So, what what do you what do you think we can do to? Are they ready to amend this? Because it's it's, it's been there for a long time, and I think before yeah you you answer that first. I want to I want to go to the smart so that you can sort okay. of um, diverge into yeah right. I think that at this stage of our development, because everything is from now onwards, mm -hmm. so that we can change the process and make things better and we couldn't have had a better person uh, mm -hmm. as a president because Nanado Danko Akufuado is uh, you know he served in a high place of uh, law within the land okay. he's held so many high positions as a, I think probably he's probably held the position as a chief justice before before correct so, oh, so who, he's been there before so who better who better to have this change than him I think it's let's continue this in our next series please thank you for watching subscribe like and then share put your comments in the comment section below and watch out for the next series thank you for watching